What's up, everyone? We are live at 5 Eastern Time. I'm Paul Wontorek. I'm Beth Stevens. Oh, and it's Monday, May 4th. Did I get that right? You did. Oh, yes, because let's yes. let Caitlin say it. Caitlin Moynihan joining us. Hello. Go ahead, say it. May the 4th be with you. There you go. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for, for sharing that. That was all over my Instagram today. That's all it is. There was a lot of it. Um, hey, Beth, we have a fantastic Broadway star here today. Who is our guest? Wait for it. We have Miguel Cervantes here from Hamilton on the Broadway. Amazing. I can't wait to see him play Hamilton. I haven't seen it yet, but hopefully I will see him soon. But I've, well, I'll tell, I'll tell him. I, I've, I've been obsessed with this guy for a really long time. You so I'm really are excited. a fan. Yeah. I'm really excited that he's here. Um, so we will get to him, but first... Let's do today's news. Today, we are celebrating some award winners. That's right. We all may be home, but award season is still in swing. And we have the winners of the Lucille Glortel Awards, which were awarded last night, virtually. And the big winners were Octet, Dave Malloy. Beth, Beth, they were actually awarded. They were really awarded, just they weren't handed the. But when child. you say they were virtually were awarded, it sounds like it's fake. They really weren't. Real. It's fine, real. fine. Online, just say online. Digitally, online, whatever. They were. The Lucille Lortel Awards were announced. Here's what they are Octet and uh, Heroes of the Fourth Turning were the big winners of the night. So that yeah. is Dave Malloy's Octet, which won Best Musical, and Will Arbery's Heroes of the Fourth Turning, which won Best Play, or Outstanding. They're Outstanding, Lucille Lortel. Um, other big winners, well, also, Hero of the Fourth Turning's Michelle Pock and Isabel Bird won for Featured Actress and Lighting Design, and the solo show went to Lucas Nath's Dana H. Oh. Which, which was I was nice. supposed to see, but then I know, in. Beth. I know. I'm going to keep on being bummed about that. We're anyway, all, look at the full list. It's all on the site. We're all so sorry you messed up. <laughs> yes, and congratulations to this super freshly named Pulitzer Prize winner. Wow. What? I mean, what an amazing day for Michael R. Jackson, whose little musical that could, A Strange Loop, which premiered at Playwrights Horizons last year, just was awarded the Pulitzer Prize for Drama in 2020. This is not typically awarded to musicals. There are a, ham a handful, I almost said a Hamilton full of musicals <laughs> that have won the Pulitzer, including Hamilton and Rent, uh, the two that pop into mind. There, there are more. Sunday in the Park, South Pacific. Yes. yes. A few more. Thank They're you. all listed Thank in the story. You. Yeah, so this is so exciting. This is a um, an obviously an off-Broadway musical, and it's all about a guy named Usher, a black queer writer working as a Broadway usher while writing a musical about a black queer writer working as a usher. It, it, it's meta. You're it's making great. a strange loop, yeah. Yeah, that's the loop. Um, and this is so exciting. And you know, now I'm wondering if we're going to see the show on Broadway. I feel like we will. Um, but they're, they had previously announced plans to bring it to the Woolly Mammoth, that's in DC, right? Mm -hmm. In the fall, and they said that maybe it would end up on Broadway. So I don't know what's happening with those plans, but we're definitely gonna be seeing more of a strange loop. Uh, Michael R. Jackson won $15,000, but more than that, it's, I mean, it's really, it's a really fancy uh, prize. And the other finalists, because I know you want me to mention them, Beth, are Will Arbery's Heroes of the Fourth, Turning, which we just talked about the Lord Tell Awards, um, and David Henry Huang and Janine Tesori's Soft Power, another musical that was at the Public Theater, and the cast album for that one just came out. Anyway, congratulations! This is this. It's really exciting when when sort of like a, you know, a, a show like this wins. So we're we're super happy. We are. Yes, and some big names and big shows are happening online virtually. Everything's virtual, Paul. Okay. Here we so, go. Here we go. I'm putting a bet on this virtual. Shows is launching a weekly one night only spotlight on plays series, and they're starting on May 7th. This is all to benefit the Actors Fund, which really is helping out a lot of people right now. Okay. So they will be Thursdays at 8 o'clock on the Actors Fund YouTube channel and on Broadway's Best Shows uh, YouTube and Facebook channels. Listen to these names. So start kicking it off is the one and only Patti Lapone, our guest from Friday, 
and John Malkovich with Dylan Baker, Ethan Phillips, and Michael Nichols on May 7th doing David Mamet's November. Now, when that was on Broadway back in 2008, that starred Laurie Metcalf and Nathan Lane in the roles played by Patty and uh, John Malkovich. The other three were in that original Broadway cast, so they probably know how it goes. Right. Um, <laughs> And then they're also going to do a reunion of Significant Other, the Joshua Harmon play with the original cast, Gideon Glick, Lindsay Mendez, Rebecca Naomi Jones, Sass Goldberg. Then on May 21st, Brian Cranston and Sally Field will do A.R. Gurney's Love Letters, which always attracts stars, doesn't it? You know, it's just one of those shows. So just a lot of stars coming together for a really great cause. And uh, you can donate to the Actors Fund now, or you can wait until then. By the way, my friend Dave Quinn, who works at People Magazine, when, when people started doing readings, he said they have to do love letters because they were already on separate sides of the stage. Yeah. It was sort of like the most obvious play to do. There's not the a lot of blocking in love letters. <laughs> right. <It's literally, laughs> they read love letters. It's, it's reading love letters. It's yeah. good. Yeah. Yes. And some of Broadway's biggest stars are helping you give a great Mother's Day present. Yeah, so this is a, a beautiful photo of our friend Celia Keenan Bolcher, who was here uh, recently. She is one of ma many stars. Too many stars. I can't even write them. I couldn't write them all down. Everyone is doing this. It's called um, Broadway Does Mother's Day. And it's happening on Mother's Day, uh, May 10th at 3 p.m. And it's a yeah. digital variety show. And it's kind of replacing um, the Easter Bonnet competition, is what I hear, so in, in sort of style and, and energy. Um, and I mean, there's literally too many stars to name. And it's good. and also the Broadway uh, companies of Moulin Rouge, Jagged Little Pill, Company, Tina, Chicago, Diana, Mean Girls, Girl from the North Country, Six, Mrs. Doubtfire, they're all involved too. So this is gonna be a big, fun Broadway extravaganza. I think it's on Buzzfeed, is that right? Is that the, I don't know, I don't have the information, but it's on Sunday at three o'clock and I'm sure we'll be talking about it again. So that's exciting. Yay, moms. Yes, and this news has us thinking we might still be able to build a prom this year. That's right. There is a picture of Ryan Murphy, who is behind the prom movie version of the Broadway musical, the Tony-nominated musical, Broadway.com's show of the year for 2018. So, okay, here's what he said. He said, all of the major stars, which includes Meryl Streep, mm -hmm. Nicole Kidman, Andrew Rannells, James Corden, had wrapped before Good. the pandemic shut everything down. So it's possible it could still be, the prom movie could still be in theaters by the holidays, something to look forward to. Also well, they, the they, they were just missing some like extra footage, like probably exteriors of the high school. He didn't say that specifically, but if you want- The monster to truck, time. the monster truck show that they go to, they probably <laughs> need some footage of that. Probably they do. Uh, so. At any rate, there is a new song, which is no surprise to anyone who's ever followed how these adaptations go, but something to look forward to. And of course, this really heavily involved the Broadway creative team and the Broadway stars are cheering it on. So maybe we'll have it by Christmas. I, I'm, I'm hoping, Beth. And oh, yeah. the, other, the other thing you forgot to say is that he is spending his quarantine writing his um, course line show. Oh. You know, he's, he's supposed to be doing that course line that, that last show, and that's what he's working on. So you know Ryan Murphy, he's all about Broadway. And by the way, everyone, go check out Hollywood. Hey, Lapone is epic, but it's it's just good in a lot of ways. <laughs> anyway, uh, Caitlin, why don't you tell everyone about today's guest? Yes, glad we got Mr. Miguel Cervantes here kicking us off for the week of Live at Five Home Edition, live on both Facebook and YouTube. He just recently took over the title role yet again in, uh, in the Broadway production of Hamilton after closing out for the Chicago Company. He's been on Broadway before. He was in If Then, American Idiot. We're so happy to have him. You guys can follow him on social at Mig. Dot Cervantes. He's verified, so you know it's him. Leave all of your questions in the comments below. And please welcome Miguel and Paul. Miguel hey, Cervantes. Hey, what's up, everybody? How are you doing, Paul? So good to see you. Thanks for having me, man. I'm so excited. Yeah? Are you, how's your day? How's your day, it's, Ben? It's, it's a beautiful day. The sun's out. It's a little chilly in Chicago. I don't know if you know anything about Chicago, but it always seems I, like I know all about Chicago. <laughs> the winter just lasts too long. I was the, the golf course is just opened, which is like this crazy thing. We're going to go play golf today, and it was 32 degrees. Here it is. on. So It's too, it's just too cold. But it's a, it's a really nice day out, so we'll take that. 
I think maybe by June you'll have some nice. <laughs> it's a, they say Chicago winters are so terrible, but the summers are so nice that you forget how terrible it is. And I remembering uh, what what that exactly what that means. Yeah. So um, let's talk about Hamilton first of all. So yeah. you had you had just started in the Broadway. Yeah. Production? I finished uh, in January, January 5th in Chicago after all yeah. three and a half years, about over 1,200 performances. Um, and uh, they asked me to come to New York. And so I started at the beginning of March. I had just gotten there uh, 10 performances in. I was just getting my rhythm there with Daniel Breaker and Mandy uh, and all the, 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 the Broadway crew. We were just getting to really dig in. And uh, it was the Wednesday, the, the, you know, the infamous Wednesday. Uh, we had our matinee and it was fine. And it was an edge of ham. It was great. Um, the New York Edge of Hams were so, so amazing. Um, but uh, we started the Wednesday night show and I said, I don't know if we're going to make it maybe the end of the weekend, maybe next week. Uh, intermission comes, I'm watching the, the news is on the TV and I said, I don't know if this is the NBA was going down. And then it was right before um, uh, Jefferson Norber, the election of 1800. I was just about to go on stage <laughs> and uh, Daniel Breaker, he's about to go on for, you know, um, that his, his big, uh, you know, campaign and i said yeah. Daniel, i just heard that tom hanks went down i think we're done man i think we're not coming back tomorrow <laughs> I mean, that was like the last straw then the yeah. NCAA, nba and that's and then so that was wednesday and um and that was our my last performance is 10 whole shots um on broadway before they shut us down wow 10 okay yeah you're right once tom hanks is sick we can't be in the <laughs> yeah. people i mean yeah. come on come on um so you uh you went home to kelly and jackson right yes, they yep, were they were yep. already in chicago yeah we were gonna do the yep. sort of back and forth i was gonna uh come back on the weekend sunday and monday um and uh, hang out in chicago jackson was gonna finish school and then we were gonna uh reunite uh at our new house in new jersey uh okay. sometime after in the summer uh but once this happened i came back here to be with them in chicago uh until to see you know sort of the waiting game like everyone else yeah, and Chicago has been a really special place for you. So you you moved there for Hamilton. Yeah, you know, I got the job in um uh in uh, in 2016 in May, mm -hmm. and I made the joke all the time. I mean, I, I literally said the words. I'm not being sort of funny. I used to say the words like, yeah, I don't know, maybe I don't know what's going to happen next. I don't know if this is for me anymore. But unless Lin Manuel Miranda calls and uh, Ham wants to be wants me to be Hamilton. He never called me. It wasn't Lynn, never called, but I got the audition. And that's sort of uh, what happened. And they said, hey, would you go to Chicago? So for we were going to be here for a little while. And then after the first year, it kind of felt like we were going to be here for a while. So we went ahead and put down some roots. And it's been an, um, this city is it's, a, it's been an amazing place for us through all yeah. that we've been through. It's been an amazing, amazing. Yeah, place. you've been through a lot. We've been thinking about you yeah. a lot. Um, your your beautiful daughter, Adelaide, uh, we lost her in October in October. Yeah. Um, she had epilepsy. Mm -hmm. Um, and you very public and open about it and in a, in a sort of beautiful way. Was that, was that just sort of natural for you to be able to talk about that? So, and I think it really sort of bonded you with the Chicago community and you were you still know, doing Hamilton at that point. Yeah. You Chicago. know, I think, I think the, the thing about that, um, it's, uh, you know, I say this a lot about sort of the Hamilton experience, right? If I could give it all away, if I could not be Hamilton, if I could yeah. not have any of this and have my daughter healthy, I would do it yeah. in a second. I would do it in, in a heartbeat. And yeah. but you don't get those kind of choices, right? So um, we were sort of in this position where um, we could sort of add a spotlight to this situation and we learned really mm -hmm. quickly that epilepsy is, there's there's a lot to be learned there's a lot that needs to be done to help folks with epilepsy so we decided to sort of re you know refocus this yeah. sort of grief into 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 our advocacy and the folks in Chicago got behind us me and Kelly my wife got behind us 100% and we found such a strong community here both for the Hamilton all the, the ham the ham fam they embraced us in an sure. amazing way. And then the Cervantes family also was embraced and lifted up and supported through all of this. And so when she died in October, um, the, you know, we felt like we had a family here, uh, both at Hamilton and in Chicago to help us and to, um, and to continue to help us fight for the research dollars and the things that need to be done for this. So it, it was, you know, I don't, I don't, you know what you believe in um but this seemed like the right place for us and mm -hmm. we were in the right 
the right time and we got what we needed because we were here. Um, and so that, that's sort of how it all, how Chicago has become home for us yeah. um, uh, in a big, big way. And what was it like going back on stage and, and how did that actually sort of help you? Was it sort of a, a, a way to refocus or what, what was that whole experience like? This is hard to imagine for a lot of people. Yeah. You know, a lot of, I got a lot of messages about that. Um, how, like, I can't believe that you do quiet uptown every night. Yeah. Um, with that in mind, or I can't believe, you know, and the, you know, one of the amazing parts about being Hamilton is you get asked to, and you're able to do so many emotions. You're asked to do just the, this, the, the range that you have to, to go through every night is unbelievable as an actor, as a I just think it's the best. So I would in fact not go to that place mm -hmm. when I was going to that place on stage, um, sure. I would yeah. sort of use, you know, you know, the actor tricks to do other things and sort of take my mind away uh, from what my regular yeah. life was. You know, my wife is the superhero. She, you know, people said, oh, I can't believe you have to go up there. And I was like, no, I get to go up there. Yeah. I get to go do that. Right. My my family, they, they're home and they have to deal with that. So I got, it was a little bit of an escape. Um, mm -hmm. It was hard to leave. It was hard to, to leave them here. Um, and so going back, um, I'll, I'll never forget this as long as I live. Um, sorry. Uh, yeah. I took about two weeks off. Um, and, you know, I came back after that. And, and uh, I, I came out and they were like, what's your name? I mean, I would, the world's going to know your name. What, Alexander, you know, and that thing. And um, there was an applause. There. And there's, you know, there's, there's oftentimes an applause there. Mm -hmm. um, but this one felt slightly different. You know, it felt like all of these people were applauding for, they were, they were supporting us yeah. and it wasn't about the show in that moment. Uh, maybe I was making it up. I don't know. But in that yeah. moment, I felt like we were um, embraced and loved and people um, uh, were with us. And I think I'll never forget that. And then we continued the show and it was good to get back in the rhythm and, and of all of those things. And, you know, surprisingly, you know, there were moments um, that would, you know, like in New York town when I said, you know, to meet my son was difficult and singing Theodosia um, was difficult. Yeah. Um, and those things will net will always sort of jump out. And it's, they're like that, you know, uh, Tommy Kale calls them the landmines, right? You don't ever know which one's going to jump out at you. Yeah. Um, and th th that's what would happen. Um, but it was an amazing thing to be back in the building and, and have the support of the family there. And and we uh, we're 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 going to miss this town a lot um, for all the reasons. Yeah. Uh, how's Jackson doing? He's great. You know, I think uh, he is. Uh, he's actually downstairs right now doing a hip hop class. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, he does a little it's cool to watch him do his little dances on the side, watching the screen. Um, you know, we're very fortunate. We're very, very fortunate that we did, neither of us are working. So we get to give yeah. a lot of attention yeah. to you families out there who have a job and kids who are in like high school. Oh, man, I can't even believe we're dealing with, you know, five plus seven here. Then that, I, I got that one <laughs> that I understand. So we, he gets a lot of attention and, and we're able to spend time together and do projects and stuff. So he's he's good. And, um, you know, it's an interesting time because this whole time we were planning to move to right. New Jersey to, we were going, we were, we were moving in that direction and now we're sort of sitting with anxieties everywhere, you know, our own personal yeah. anxiety surrounded by this life uh, that we have been living, the anxiety that we feel uh, from outside and all the, the healthcare workers and the folks getting sick. And then that's a whole nother thing. Um, and so we are able to be here together and spend time together and have, you know, less stressed than sometimes most. And so we're able to sort of feed off of him and he understands when we have hard days mm -hmm. and he knows when there are hard mm -hmm. days and my wife mm -hmm. has a hard day or I have a hard day. And so he's been like a little beacon of light in a, in a really weird, weird time for us. Yeah. And he's yeah. goofy and he sings and he, he's just humming a song all the time. And we just got, we got him. We just, just started being good theater people. Finally, we showed him, we started showing him musical. We showed him Newsies and Annie. Okay. We've got that. We've got the list going down. So he <laughs> said, he, oh, I'll never forget this the other day. It made my heart warm. He said, Daddy, it's so cool that these movies have all the best songs in them. I said, yes, <laughs> yes it is. So uh, it's good. He's been, he's been our, our, little, uh, our little night chatting arm over here.
I love that. I can't even imagine how how much you've changed in the last year. I mean, it's just when you look at your, you must have, you must have found strength that you didn't even know you had. I just, I, I mean. Yeah, you know, I think it's one of these things where, you know, people say a lot, they say, oh, I can't even imagine. I can't believe, I, how do you, how, how does that, and I think um, we all can, you know, anyone can. Mm -hmm. It's just that not everybody has to. And if you're put in a position where you have to do something, you're going to figure it out. You most, for the most part, you're going to have to figure out how to do it. And that's what yeah. we do. You know, and I, I remember spending time in the theater kind of in this weird place of like, what, how is this, what, how is this a, a thing? Like, how are we? And, and if the next day comes and the show happens, we're here the next day comes and we are moving on. And, um, you know, our lives are forever changed for lots of different reasons. And yeah. um, we're different people because of it and stronger, maybe um, wiser, uh, more experienced, something maybe, but we do get yeah. a, a, a different perspective. And I have to say, you know, um, the folks who have special needs, family members, sick kids, sick family members, especially in that time right now, need to get a lot mm -hmm. of love and support because we've lived in a world of social distancing and hand washing and doctors and nurses and scared of a, a virus for a very, very long time, you know, for the last four years, um, she was so fragile with her immune system. And now everyone else kind of is catching up to the normal that we had, had learned before. So uh, give some special love to any folks out there who are, who are, who, are, who, are, who have already been fighting that fight and are now um, even in more dire situations. So absolutely. You know, yeah. uh, I, I mentioned I'm a big fan of yours. I totally fell in love with your talent when I saw you in giant off Broadway. So good. You were so fantastic. You know I was like, who, who is this guy? He's fantastic. I, I my Kate, uh, Kate Baldwin just posted something, uh, the other day and it was the video of us making that, um, soundtrack. Uh, and I hadn't cast, seen that cast, thing. In cast the recording, cast recording. No, sorry. You're right. Sorry. Cast recording. We made the cast recording. <laughs> um, and, uh, I hadn't seen that in such a long time. And I, I just remember, oh, it was the most amazing time. And, you know, I, I met Michael Greif during that show and we became yeah. friends and you know, all of the ways that, you know, we have connections in this business and funny enough, our neighbor uh, friend, uh, Jackson's friend, uh, her mom texted me a picture and said, I was watching my walked into the kitchen and my daughter was in there dancing. And I, so I looked and see, and I looked at the iPad and this, guy was there with like this Danny's and it was you and she was listening to jump from giants right at that very moment wow. i said really and i saw you wow, know this went online i listened to it and so so such a great show i'm so sad it ended too soon michael john yeah. lacuse i love you if you're out there i love you it was enormous it was an enormous show um, well and you know it's people say well it was so long i was like well you know hamilton's long this this it, it was it was giant was long right, it's, and it was right. i never felt like it was too long uh you know right, all right. the reasons why those things don't work you know whatever they are uh did not yeah. go on but it was it was beautiful man it was such yeah, a beautiful show was. and i'm so glad to have been part of it for for as long as i did and you started young didn't you did you start performing when you were I mean, like, yeah, kind of, kind of, kind of. I was a, I was a kid. I was a sports kid. I was a soccer, uh, uh, you know, everything uh -huh. you know, sports. And then, uh, but you know, I had a theatrical sort of vein in there somewhere. And, and I started as like a sixth grader. I started, you know, shaking, dancing, and I went to the arts magnet in Dallas as a dancer. Um, mm -hmm. Sort of that was my end. I never. I consider I can move. I'm a mover. Well, but and then that's sort of where it started as a, as a as a you know junior high. No performance in my family, no real, uh, you know, it wasn't a theater family. It just kind of happened uh, to come into my life and it's something that that became, uh, you know, here here I am 40 years later and uh, and, and doing okay. Sorry, my dog is flipping out. This is, she's a fan, she's a fan over there. <laughs> <laughs> what happens? This is the new world we're in. Exactly, exactly. Uh, I'm gonna bring in Caitlin. And uh, Caitlin, I'm gonna pop myself out for one second. Why don't you ask Cervantes, I just called you by your last name. Hey, Why don't you ask Miguel what the people online are saying? Oh my gosh, yes. So Miguel, we're gonna go right into it. Hard hitting journalism. <laughs> so Amy wants to know favorite Chicago deep dish pizza. Um, the, the where we go, we're sort of right down the middle. Giordano's was was where we first. Uh, no, 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 no. Giordano's. I'm sorry if you're Lumagnati's. 
Okay. That was that was the one that was we went there. We were introduced when we first got here. It was such a good thing. Although, you know, deep dish, I have to say, it's a whole lot of bread. I don't need to <laughs> so much bread. We can't the, okay, those you're, you're you're crazy. You're crazy. Those <laughs> costumes, listen, those costumes do not lie. Those green pants you are not forgiving. Like they will let you know if you've been uh going for an extra helping. So yeah, it was very, you know. Few and far between was the deep dish, but Blue Magnati was 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 there's there like a right down the street from where I live. There's like a to go, a quick a quick one. We would sneak in there every once in a while. Are you eating a lot of that during quarantine? No, no quarantine. We're actually cooking a lot. I we I do we do, we I, you know sort of I got a, a ninja one of those those pressure cooker ninjas. Oh, cool. What are you making? What are you making? I need chicken. Some chicken. You you just pressure cook the chicken, then you slather some barbecue sauce. <laughs> Oh man, I, it's, it's like how did I not know about it? my wife got it for me for Christmas, which is weird, right? But I love it. I love <laughs> love everything about it. So yeah, I get in there, I get in the kitchen, and I I go to town um, whenever I can. I love it. All right, so Stephanie wants to know: although you only were able to do ten performances, what was the biggest difference you noticed about playing Hamilton in Chicago versus doing it on Broadway? What's really interesting about the two is that. Um, the the Broadway house is smaller. It's only uh, 1,300 seats, and the Chicago Art Theater here was at 1,900 seats. So it's smaller, but the stage is bigger. So the the Richard Rogers stage is oh, bigger. So I I got on stage and I was like, it feels the same, but it just felt like I was not quite right. Like just just this much off in the wrong place. And so I did a couple uh, performances, and I would get these notes about. So you got to move just as hair the lights over here you know and so and but after and it was weird it was really to be on that first performance it felt like um the the um uh stranger things right because like, mm -hmm. uh, my my metaphor is it's the upside down like it was uh -huh. familiar. i know this place i know it i know it. i know backwards and forwards i know what it is but it's just just different enough that i just kind of had to double take every once in a while and i was the first performance just sweating so weird and i'm not nervous anymore but uh and so after i you know after about five performances i got the rhythm in the backstage interesting fun fact broadway there's no you can't go behind the stage so if you go off this way you have to go under to the other side chicago you can go behind so we had it easy and i was like oh man this is terrible <laughs> what's going on you also did if then at that theater right? i did I, yeah so i you know i I, I did. Uh, I it was funny that you know that I've done four Broadway shows and two of them in the same theater. Um, I'm sure there's lots of stories like that where you. But so I felt really comfortable going back in there, and I know all the guys down backstage and all the all the crew and and the, and the folks in there. So it was really nice to go back in there, and and I actually got to do Broadway uh, four times, uh, four performances in 2016. Uh, when right when Lynn left, Hobby took over, and I took over Hobby's spot for just four performances. So I kind of got a little feel of that you know that's like a train you know i took it was four weeks of rehearsal and then just go and i'm on stage with david and oak and renee wow. and like i was like what is happening right now and i <laughs> I, I just finished watching lynn have his last performance and it's this um, and they say okay miguel little well, miguel here you go <laughs> so um and that was my introduction and then we got a full full rehearsal perform uh, process for um uh, for Chicago, but I mean, but it was nice to be in that theater where I was kind of comfortable yeah. and knew a little bit of that, some of the bases. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm excited that you're um, get to play the title, the title role. I'm into it. I like it. Must be it's, it's, must be nice to get that opportunity. It's not. It's not the worst. It is not the worst. <laughs> you know, I it, and if then uh, if you blinked too many times, you'd miss me. Um, <laughs> so uh, it was an amazing time. But you know, it was it was uh, it was amazing to be there and watch Adina do her thing. Um, but this, it, you know, people call Hamilton uh, a long show. And I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. It, it starts and then it's over. And right. I get really angry with folks who talk about the king and how amazing the king is. Mm. And I'm sure he's lovely, but you know, he's, <laughs> he's on stage for all of 12 minutes and I'm right. off stage for all of 12 minutes. Right. So, you know, but it's, so uh, it, it's, it's, uh, it's, 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 but it's good to be the king. Yeah. Hey, oh. <laughs> By the way, I didn't blink and miss you. And if that, I was like, that's the dude from Giant. <laughs> there you go. There you go. There you go. I love it. Okay, Maybe. I think we do one last question. And this is a big question. A lot of people want to know, especially Raphael, your shirt is awesome. Is it custom made? It is. It is it, where is it? It's not custom. Well, it was a Chicago custom made. I don't know if I can get around to the back. 
It is the Chicago. Oh, cool. Yeah, it's our Chicago yeah. Hamilton shirt, right? It's the it's Chicago flag with the Hamilton stars. That's such a cool, such a cool wow. logo. We got these at the very, very beginning. Um, the, the, that was one thing about this company. They made the coolest swag. Like we got the cool bags and the, uh, this, this such cool stuff. I got some Hamilton golf balls. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. <laughs> I also we also got a nice glimpse of your ponytail. Yeah, yeah. It's not. It's go. It's still there. I'm gonna. I, I you know, Lynn. I was in the elevator with Lynn yeah. early, 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 and I had just gotten the job, and we were in rehearsals, and and he he said, uh, I said, hey man, I just before auditions, like I just got my hair cut. I mean, it was shy, high and tight, like super short. And I said, um, if you'd have told me. I would have let my hair grow in. <laughs> well, you know, he's like, look, just cut your hair, man. It's like, there's wigs, like this long hair. He had still had his long hair. He's like, this long hair is a hassle. I hate it. And then so, so flash forward, um, you know, two years and I finally had grown my hair out long enough. And, and it's like, I have this curly, like Jon Snow kind of, Oh kind of, yeah. Like, okay. That's what yeah, I wanted to say. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, uh, and, and then, so Lynn came into the, into the, the wig room that day and he was like, Oh, well, see if my hair had been like that, I would have cut out. That's, that's good hair. So I, 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 I kind of, I kind of dig it. Um, you know, if they're making the game of Thrones, uh, movie, I can be Jon Snow's like cousin or something. Totally. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but yes, it, it works out. It's, it's, it's not so bad. So I think I'll keep it for a while as long as I can hang on to it up top here and, uh, <laughs> you know, do the, the smoke and mirrors. And I'll, I'll hang on to it. So I keep it going. But I did. I will have to say this. Uh, about four weeks ago, whatever day it was, I said, "Hey, come here." So I took a shower and just combed it all straight down. And she just took scissors straight across the bottom and cut that. So it's the old home haircut. But curly hair, I can uh, I can get away with it a little bit. I think. Oh, so you're getting some home hair care. I'm yeah. not. Yeah. Good for you. <laughs> Good yeah. I wish we all. I wish we all Easy had a Kelly at home to take yes, care of our yeah. hair. Yeah, my son doesn't want a haircut, so he's he's doing the full Justin Bieber, so it's fine. <laughs> yeah. Uh, bringing back in Beth and Caitlin. Hey guys, um, Miguel. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I'm glad to hear you and the family are doing well. We've been thinking about you a lot, as I said, and just uh, stay strong. And and we'll see you on Broadway soon enough. Can't wait. Well, thanks. And thank you to everybody out there for all the support you've given us, uh, my family. We re we felt it. We heard it. Um, and and it's, it's been an amazing, amazing to feel all of that love. So thank you. And thanks for thanks for having me, guys. Awesome. Hey, Caitlin, why don't you take us out? Thank you guys so much for tuning in today for another episode of Live at Five Home Edition. You can follow along wherever you get your podcast by searching for hashtag Live at Five and hitting that subscribe button. Be sure to tune in next time when we talk to former Wicked Witch, Amanda Jane Cooper.